Hello and welcome to the 2015 Automotive Technology live presentation from Vibo, Denmark. With us here today we are having Niels Brun and Mike, Michael Nielsen who are going to tell us a little bit more about this AP degree program of two years and more interesting stuff that you can find here about Denmark and all the things. So, welcome everybody. I'm, um, as they mentioned, Michael. I am the one who will admit you when we come back. I'm also responsible for the internet and the connections of the house. Today, <coughs> we're going to look at a small movie. Oh, just some sound problems. So, sorry about this. So, it works now? Good. Uh, we're going to see a little movie about our study today. We're going to talk about the automotive technology uh, that we offer here in Campus Viborg, Dania, Danish Academy of Higher Education. And uh, after that, we will go uh, more detail into the study and the conditions we offer around. And uh, next to me is the one responsible for <coughs> the education, that is Nils Boom. Yes, hello. Um, I'm program manager for the automotive technology program and um, after Michael have give you information about uh, the education I will uh, go in details with uh, the technical stuff and you can answer me some questions about uh, the technical stuff yes so basically basically we're talking about a two-year education that's uh, a so-called AP degree, academic program degree. It's only two years and actually only three semesters at school. You can say it's about uh, three, uh, two thirds of a bachelor education, but you still have after the education the possibility of topping up to a bachelor. I'll revert to this uh, item later on. But three semesters at school and one semester where you spend three months, at least 13 weeks, in a placement working either in Denmark or abroad in a company really dealing with automotive technology because this education we're talking about is very practically orientated and it peaks of course in your placement in the fourth semester. But I think it's now time to give this uh, to see this introductory movie made by two of our students. And we are back uh, with uh, Niels and uh, Michael. Yes, welcome back. I hope you found it interesting uh, because it is an interesting study, a study that you will not find in many places on the planet because many places you have uh, educations pointing at uh, uh, how to design cars, car engineering, 
but car technology as a higher education is found very rarely around and it gives you a lot of good job possibilities. But just uh, to, uh, I want to start with some practicalities about studying here. We are now in a province city, we are not in Copenhagen, we are not in Aarhus, but in a provincial city called Viborg, just in the middle of the peninsula of Jutland. And uh, this city is quite peaceful, of course, but still vibrant. We have quite many students in the city. And uh, what is very important is also, uh, apart from being a nice city, historical city, that uh, we offer some very good uh, opportunities for young people to come here and study. First of all, there's a uh, guarantee for all incoming students that you'll get accommodation here. And accommodations here, you'll normally find much cheaper than in the big cities. Living costs, living expenses in general are less than in the big cities. Actually, we have students living here from 300 to 600 euros a month, inclusive of accommodation. And that's not that frightening as you should think, considering that Denmark is known as a very expensive country. Furthermore, I would say that we are one of the very few institutions who actually take care of our students before they come. Because when you get admitted with us, we will find a room that suits you as to price and as to uh, where it placed in the town. Most of our rooms are just across the street in the dorms, so that's about 50 meters away from the school buildings. So it's actually very, very near. If you go a little further away, you can find even cheaper opportunities. But uh, nice rooms with uh, bathrooms, mini kitchen and big kitchens, where you can fulfill all your demands and still live a life together with students. But we've, we sent all our admitted students a list of a possible accommodation, and then you can choose among it. And when you arrive in town, one of us representatives from uh, Dania will be there with the keys in our hand leading you to your new home. So actually, that's a sign of what is really our policy being in the province. We are the institution, the Dania institution that takes really care of you from before you come and during all your study time. Actually, we have an international <coughs> office open uh, two days a week. We help you with a lot of things during your study. So um, you will actually not be a number with us, you'll be a person that everyone knows. Uh, the class you'll be in will probably have between 20 and 30 students. The whole institution will have about uh, 250 students all together. And then we share roof with, uh, with VIA University College. So we have a lot of common facilities, you'll find a lot of young people in this campus. Uh, as to the facilities, we can mention that in this very building you'll find a canteen where you can get a hot meal every day from around three and a half uh, euros. Uh, and they have a new menu every day, so um, uh, you don't need to cook at home, you can have bread at home. Also, you'll find in this premises a big sport room. The building is open for all students 24-7. So uh, you can actually go and play ball in the sport room or whatever you like to uh, with your friends 24-7. Next to the building you'll find our student house with a bar open for students every day with a lot of facilities where you can party, where you can prepare yourself, where you can play the music you like. So we offer a lot of modern facilities for our students at this place. So um, it's, it's in many ways a very attractive place to be in, a city with 45,000 inhabitants, 100,000 in the community, makes that it's not too big, you'll not be an anonymous person in this place, so um, it's good to know. And of course what you maybe saw in the pictures in the little movie before, the facilities we have to offer from a technical point of view, they are superb, that's one of the best facilities you will find in Denmark. Uh, actually, uh, we educate <coughs> mechanics from all over the country. Uh, when a new car is introduced to the market, they can learn how it works. So we need to have the newest equipment. And being a student with us, you will enjoy working in these surroundings. These, these are very, very special. But uh, that's something we can talk more about when we go into the details of the study. And I think that will that's your business? Yeah. That could be my business, and uh, we can start now. <laughs> um, if we talk about um, this program, we have um, 
two main subjects. It's the technical part and uh, we have the business related part. And uh, if we uh, talk about, uh, look into the technical part, we have uh, <coughs> a, um, a lot of learning about uh, um, vehicles um, on the streets, uh, mod uh, new vehicles, and we look after the system uh, on the vehicles. We work with uh, understanding of the system. Uh, we work with uh, diagnostic uh, troubleshooting. And it's uh, the whole uh, vehicle, uh, it's engine, engine management, it's um, uh, IT analyzer, diagnostic, it's uh, safety and uh, CIS systems, it's uh, the whole body, um, uh, gearboxes and transmissions, etc. There's a um, lot of possibilities there. Uh, that's uh, necessary to have a uh, deep knowledge about this uh, technical stuff um, <clears throat> because um, uh, part of uh, the students who um, uh, have done this uh, uh, um, work, uh, work afterward with, uh, in, in the workshop with, um, with a diagnostic troubleshooting at a modern car and it's um, necessary with a really deep knowledge. And we, for example, we offer you each week one uh, extra day where you have uh, the possibility to uh, go to train um, in the workshop on a, um, at your own. Uh, you can uh, continue work with your uh, tasks uh, from the classes. Uh, the other final, uh, other main part of uh, this uh, program is the business-related part. Here we talk about uh, management, we talk about uh, economy, we talk about marketing, we talk about uh, uh, law stuff, uh, communication, uh, quality. And the reason that you need to know something about uh, all these uh, areas is uh, if you will um, uh, go for a key position in a, a modern uh, dealer, uh, dealership, it's uh, necessary to know uh, something about business. And if you make a combination about uh, this business related stuff and the technical part, uh, you really have the possibility to be a uh, a key worker in uh, in, uh, in one of the new uh, big exciting car. That's shortly about mm. uh, the program, and um, that's the main thing. In um, and added to this, we have um, the possibility to offer you uh, um, some sub subjects about innovation, uh, entrepreneur entrepreneurship. That means you have the possibility to make your own uh, business plan if you will uh, have some dreams, uh, plans to uh, start at your your own if when you have graduated from uh, the education or maybe after a couple of years when you have some uh, work experience. Um, as um, Michael mentioned earlier, uh, in the fourth semester you have uh, to go to an, um, an internship and uh, we have the possibility to offer you an internship here in Denmark or it could be abroad. And um, here in Vibok, we are uh, located in the middle of the country. And in, um, in our city, uh, or in the area uh, between, uh, around our city, we have um, eight uh, youths, a company who uh, work with export uh, to the automotive area. So that would give you um, a great opportunity to uh, work in a Danish company uh, and um, get the relation maybe to to your own home country. Um, and uh, of course you have the possibility to take the internship uh, all uh, worldwide. It could be wherever you, uh, you live 
if you have a company there and uh, you will uh, bring your Danish education, <laughs> you can. Um, you have the possibility to uh, make a contract with a local company and do your internship at home. That's up to you. Of course, um, we will um, support you and advise you in the process. Yes, I think it's uh, shortly about. Yeah. I can add that um, although we are a relatively small campus, uh, you'll actually end up in a very international environment here. Uh, last year I took students in from 15 different nations. So um, you, you really find people from all over the world, from uh, the Far East, from Middle East, but especially from Europe, some from South America, some from the US and even from Australia. So uh, all around the world. So um, you can have a lot of international experience even in a small place like people. Some of our audience uh, is asking, uh, what is the usual average time uh, of response between the application and the approval of your application by the academy? As far as it goes, as fast as it goes. Uh, right now, we are uh, taking in students uh, every day. I'm doing interviews on Skype mostly with our applicants, and I'm taking about eight to ten in every day now. So, uh, but. Uh, well, we I do think with they should expect a couple of weeks. A couple of weeks normally, yes. yes, yeah. yes. But uh, if you go in and apply the normal way, you'll find out that the system will tell you it's too late. It's not. We keep taking in as long as we have free study places. So, uh, good to know for everybody is that if uh, you want to apply, just apply. Because we, as long as we have free study places, you'll be uh, taken in consideration and your application will be evaluated. Uh, also, we encourage you to take uh, advantage of our live chat and ask whatever question you may have regarding uh, all the um, aspects that you'd like to find out from uh, our professionals here on spot. Any questions out there? Somebody is asking if they already have a degree, if they can still apply to Dania. Yeah. No problem. So the answer is yes. Yeah. And I forgot to say that the education is for free for all member, uh, all people coming from the European Union. Okay, thank you. I think uh, it's a good time for us to watch the short video f um, to describe more about the life here uh, in Dania and in Viborg. And let me say it's, uh, it's a video with a lot of snow and the winters in Viborg are normally not like that. Wow. Yeah, a few weeks with snow and that's <coughs> all. Welcome. You are now in Dania, the Danish Academy for Business and Technology. It's the academy where we take good care of you from the moment before you come. Because when you apply with us and get admitted, there's a room ready for you when you arrive. And we take care of you upon arrival and on the time until you leave us. We take care of you in every subject. Your education, the social life. We take care of you as a person. You meet a friendly and very close atmosphere between students and teachers. The environment is really nice, especially the, the relation with teachers. I was really impressed that the students and teachers, they are like friends. There is no this level of hierarchy here. You can approach them with their name and in the classroom it makes difference for me because it's easier for me to learn the subject. Hello. <laughs> With us you are not a number, you are a person. At Dania, the, the student is in the center. 
if there's any complaints or, or anything like that, then you have a discussion with the teacher. The teachers here are not afraid of criticism, because uh, the teachers will take this feedback and try to work on their problems and uh, improve. So communication is really important in this academy. Being a teacher, I think it's very interesting to work with many different nationalities. We have a lot of international students, so we have a great international environment. Being in an international class is sometimes a challenge, but um, it also gives you a lot of uh, competences when you're done. It's also a good experience uh, because you will learn to communicate with people from different regions of the world. As an international student, you have to know that the city of Viborg has some very big ambitions about being one of the most international cities in the world. So you must know that you are most welcome in the city. That'll be all. Well, thank you. Wonderful. Have a nice day, sir. And the city is doing a lot of things for you to make it good to be an international student in this town. We have lots of project works and where we have to work in groups. It's like in a real life situation where we have to work with different people together to have a project done. Um, at the IT Technology, we also do a lot of uh, practical work. Each semester we have a project where the students work in cooperation with the company. And in the school we have a lot of things we can do besides the studies where we can just rest our heads. But you can also sit down with your friends in any of the resting areas at the campus and relax from the studies. At Daniel is also there is a student house. The student house is a place where the students uh, have events, meetings, and parties. There are also a music room where you can practice your music. Physical room where you can uh, exercise. It's not only for the students at Daniel, but for all the students at the campus. The dorms where we live. It's uh, they're really close to the university, just in one minute when you're there. And the dorm is close to the stadium, close to the university, and close to the center. And if you're lucky, you will get the room in the dorm from where you can see also even the football match on the stadium without paying the ticket. Isn't it nice? Uh, Vipok is a small city, about 45,000 inhabitants. It's a very old city, so you'll find a lot of small streets, a lot of small houses and old houses with a lot of atmosphere. If you like sports, Vipok also has a lot to offer. We have a very famous handball club and a lot of other sport clubs and a lot of gyms. It was surprising to see how many people are using bikes here. The cycling culture in Viborg is very developed, so it's convenient to own a bike. And it's worth mentioning that you can get a good used bike for a small amount of money. Although Viborg is not the biggest city, it will still allow you to do your shopping. Whenever you need anything, you can practically get it without leaving the city. One more thing I really like about Viborg is that there's a lot of beautiful nature around. And by the center there are two beautiful lakes where the traffic is going through them. And it's a really nice view. It's really nice to be here. It's uh, something uh, special to study in this university. I feel different. This is a really practical and great education and it's free of charge here for EU students. It has been a joy to have this education. Welcome back. Uh, 
uh, now <coughs> we've just uh, seen the video from uh, how life is here and how things are going with the study and everything. Um, we have uh, two more questions for our guests here. Just to remind you, we, we are with uh, Mikael Nielsen and Niels Plun, both of them uh, um, teachers and m coordinators and managers from uh, Dania Life Aca uh, sorry, <laughs> Academy for Higher Education. The first question is, uh, if in case somebody is rejected, are they going to receive a rejection letter so they have some coverage? They are going to be told that they have not been rejected. That could be because of uh, uh, too bad uh, language skills, for instance, or that they do not fulfill uh, the demands made by the English Ministry of Education. Or simply that there are too many students. That could happen as well. But we haven't reached that point yet. Okay, and the second question is, um, how is the interview like? Uh, to explain that in a good way, I think I'll... Um, I'll tell a little bit about the Danish hierarchy and uh, the environment being at this institution because all teachers are approached by their first name and you. So there's a very free uh, tone between teachers and students. And you'll find that, that tone, that melody again uh, in the interview. Let me put it that way, a uh, lesson where we don't laugh is a boring lesson in Denmark. And uh, you'll find a picture, a, mirror, a kind of mirror of that attitude during the interview. It will be quite relaxing. We'll talk about the weather, what you've been doing to life. And what is important for me in the interview is, of course, to know about your motivation, your uh, uh, educational background. I already had your paper, so I know, it about, uh, I know about it. But I also need to know if you have uh, the fundings to go here, if you have some parents to help you. Uh, at least for the first period of time until you may maybe get a job. And uh, also about the cultural differences being with us because it's uh, a bit different in Denmark. We are just not lecturing, but we are trying to involve all students in the classroom in class discussion. We want active students, students who want to take part in an active uh, discussion-based uh, <coughs> teaching and also being part of group works and giant and project works and all that. So it's a, maybe a bit different from what you know, but uh, and, and a very free atmosphere. And exactly in that atmosphere, the interviews will take place. So actually, we laugh during the interviews. We, it's quite relaxing, but I find out what I need to know. But don't be afraid of it. I hope this was satisfying. I think it was uh, more than satisfying. We have another question here. Somebody is asking if uh, they do not have the secondary education, which means the high school, yet finished, meaning they are yet uh, in 11th grade, for example, or mm. they have one more year to go. Is there any chance that they could apply to this uh, academy? Actually, quite a big percentage of our applicants do not have, uh, haven't passed their uh, secondary education yet. So they're conditionally admitted. That means that they'll simply have to bring or to scan or to send the final certificate when they are that, when they are that far. And in almost all cases, we get the paper. It's very, very seldom that people do not pass. It happens to the eight years, nine years I've been working with admissions once or twice. That's it. So they couldn't come because they didn't pass it, but uh, that's one out of several hundreds. So. That's normally not the case, but we take a lot in without them having passed their final exam yet. They'll simply have to bring it when they get that far, <coughs> so no problem. Okay, I understand. So uh, actually they can apply before they finish their secondary um, education back in their home countries. Yeah. Also, there is somebody else asking here, uh, what is the average requirements for the final exams? Uh, does it matter, I mean, does it differ from <coughs> country to country, especially from <coughs> Romania, somebody is asking. An average uh, de degree that they are eligible to pass <coughs> with. As to, as to this education, there are two approaches. One, the, the most common one actually, is that you come with a secondary, with a high school exam, and uh, you need to have had English and mathematics or economics for around 250. 50 lessons during the three last years of your high school. 
Uh, but on the other hand, we're talking about a technical education. So instead of having a high school exam, it's also possible to come with a vocational technical background and be <coughs> admitted on behalf of that one. So both possibilities, both accesses are open. So it's not so much about the actual final degree, uh, mm -hmm. sorry, no, final we, grade. Uh, we don't look at grades, not very much. I think in, in uh, <coughs> case of this, um, <coughs> it, it will be um, important to, to mention, but we this year offer uh, a short uh, introduction course uh, for one or two weeks and uh, for example it, uh, one of the week could be a uh, technical math mm. and, uh, that means if you have um, forgotten something or uh, a low grade uh, you have the possibility to upgrade yourself b before our study starts so that will be our recommendation that you sign up for minimum uh, two uh, introduction weeks before i can uh, I can add here that today I had a conversation, an interview with a girl who passed his high school, her high school 10 years ago and she was quite happy for getting this uh, uh, course two weeks before study starts so she could refresh some of her mathematics. Thank you very much. At the moment it seems like uh, we have no other questions. So um, just in case I think uh, they can all the time uh, consult the website eadania.dk to find more about uh, the programs here. Also uh, we are going to send you with an email with all the materials used in this presentation, the videos and uh, um, other additional stuff to help you out. So thank you for your attendance. Uh, thank you Niels and Michael for you being here and offering us the presentation. Hope to see mm. you soon in Skype. Yeah. And of course, yeah. Uh, sorry, one more question just came through right now. Yeah. Uh, somebody is asking if uh, FC certificate is needed and uh, if the A grade is uh, acceptable and considered as being passed. FC certificate, I'm lost in that one. FC. It's an English certificate, I think it's Cambridge. Uh, oh yeah, um, we prefer of course application with English test, but uh, actually uh, we at this institution value more the Skype interview because then it gives a clear answer, can this person really understand and communicate in English <coughs> and, um, and I think it gives a better, better answer, but we, we actually prefer English test, but it's not mandatory. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, with this being said, we thank you for your attendance here at uh, the 2015 Automotive Technology uh, presentation for the AP degree at uh, Dania Academy of Higher Education from Vibo office. And uh, hopefully we are going to see some applications for you. Thank you very much and have a nice day. Hi. Hi.